Welcome everybody to the demo part of this live event. My name is Nicholas Norberg and I would like to introduce you to the latest innovations that we implemented on the ARIS platform. And in the first part, I would like to demonstrate to you the Gracing Incidents X-ray diffraction application that we now added to our ARIS portfolio. Gracing Incidents diffraction, as opposed to conventional Bregmentano measurements, is usually performed on thin film samples. And thin film samples are nothing else than thin film materials that are deposited on some kind of substrate, which can either be a metal sample, a glass sample, or a single crystal. So for that, the Bragg-Pentano measurement approach is not the best because the penetration depth into the sample is far too large only to qualify the deposited layer. So that means Bragg-Pentano is usually only performed on bulk mineralogical samples. So in order to be able to perform gracing incidence diffraction, you need a parallel beam setup because a gracing incidence measurement is performed as a, at a fixed constant very low angle of incidence in order to maximize the interaction of the incoming x-rays with the very thin layer. So in order to be able to perform this measurement, we decided to change our optical conce concept on the secondary beam path and to make it more flexible to allow the user to change between different uh, uh, beam geometries. For example, the typical Bragg-Mentano parafocusing beam geometry and the parallel beam uh, geometry that you need for gracing incidents. That we achieved by introducing a prefix on prefix concept on the secondary side, which you can see here. And in addition to the normal prefix that we use to mount the whole optical beam path onto the goniometer, we introduced a second prefix with which you can mount and dismount the optical component in front of the detector. So in this case, this is a fixed anti-scatter slit. And for a grazing incidence measurement, for example, you would switch to a parallel plate collimator. So, and this is what we're going to use for our first demonstration. So in order to demonstrate the benefits of um, grazing incidence measurements on thin films, the easiest way is just to show the two different measurement geometries. So I've selected a thin film sample for this demonstration, which is an uh, indium tin oxide that is deposited on glass. It is quite a thin layer, so in a normal bragg measurement, you get a lot of interaction from the substrate. And we will begin by measuring uh, a bragg measurement, so a typical GONIO scan. And afterwards, we will switch to the parallel beam geometry and perform a grazing incidence measurement. So now I've pre-prepared a bragg measurement that is roughly two minutes long and I will simply start it. So what you will now see is, is this, that the sample is picked up by uh, the sample gripper. It is put onto the sample loader and then introduced into the system. As you can see, the whole user interaction with the instrument happens outside of the instrument, which means that the user itself doesn't have to access the inside of the system at all times. This also prevents from uh, contamination and also makes also the, the life of the user much, much more simple. So now the measurement is running and the data is being generated. As you can already see in the beginning of the measurement, you get small peaks. Those are the peaks of the, of the thin film. But you also get a very high background, and that is actually the signal that comes from the glass substrate. And the signal from the substrate is, is uh, a result of the larger penetration that we have in this uh, beam geometry into the sample itself. So now the measurement is done and we will now start the grazing incidence measurement. For that, I've also pre-prepared a grazing incidence measurement program. And this is a measurement that measures the exact same range that we have seen in the bragg measurement, however, at a constant angle of incidence of 0 0.7 degrees omega. So now that I have uh, selected the measurement program, the instrument reminds me to change the setup 
and uh, it also specifies the components that I'm supposed to change, which I will do now. For that, you simply unlock the cover, which allows you to access the optical components, and you set the instrument accordingly. I'm taking out the fixed anti scatter slit and I'm inserting the parallel plate collimator. So then I use the three newt meter key to have a reproducible force applied to the prefix screws. I also take out the solar slit in order to increase uh, the counting statistics. And once I'm done, I close the instrument. I press continue and then again the gripper will pick up the sample and introduce it into the instrument. So now the measurement starts and uh, for your convenience we decided to speed up this measurement because it is uh, 16 minutes long and uh, which is why we decided to make it a little bit faster. However, you will still see the live data being uh, recorded, however, just slightly faster than in real time. However, you can still follow the time at the bottom to see that the measurement time is indeed 16 minutes. Now also the grazing incidence XRD measurement has finished and I think in order to compare the two techniques with each other, uh, the best way is to look at the data directly, uh, which will immediately uh, make the benefits of the grazing incidence application clear to you. So for that, I'm just going to open the two scans that we now just collected in our data viewer tool. and I compare them with each other and you immediately see so in the red uh, scan which is the grazing incident scan and the blue scan is the Bregmentano scan you see in the red scan the signal that we get from the indium uh, tin oxide layer on top of the glass substrate is maximized so we can nicely see all the different peaks even at high angles which is not possible in the Bregmentano measurement also the peak intensities uh, are much much higher uh, and the peak to background ratio is much better in the grazing incidence measurement and also the, the substrate signal is uh, minimized compared to the Bregpentano measurement and yeah this already shows you the big benefit of the technique sure the measurement time is longer but this is a result of the measurement geometry itself because we are using a parallel plate collimator uh, the pixel detector, despite being uh, a one-dimensional detector, cannot be used in 1D mode. It has to be used in 0D mode because due to the parallel plate collimator, we only measure one orientation at a time with the full detector, even if we... and there is no uh, workaround and that also explains the longer measurement time. But you can already see the benefit because despite the fact that you measure longer, you also gain a lot more information from thin layers. And uh, with that, I would like to say thank you for your attention.